past time uh, we have finished, or uh, the whole lecture was devoted uh, essentially to a linear gauge theory. And what we have established that uh, linear gauge theories are not powerful enough, uh, at least for the purposes the gauge theory uh, is sort of uh, valued. Uh, so today we want to consider a nonlinear setup. Uh, and I will try to do this a little bit uh, abstract. So here are, here are Fred Horn maps. What we have is this. Uh, we have two Banach manifolds, say x and y. So. And the map f between x and y A smooth map is called Fred Holm. If uh, you know the derivative uh, at each point is a Fred Holm map between Tx, x, and T. What? Now, <coughs> whenever we have a uh, Fred Hall map, uh, we can associate to this an integer, which is called an index. So the uh, index of dxf, that is a dimension of the kernel of dxf uh, minus the dimension of the core kernel of dxf. This actually doesn't depend on x. So whenever, say, x is connected, uh, and this is called the index of f. Now, the basic theorem is uh, if f is from home and y is a regular value for f, then the preimage of a regular value is a smooth. Submanifold of dimension D. That is the index of F. Right, this is something that you uh, already know very well from the finite dimensional setup. <coughs> and uh, Fred Hall maps are exactly sort of a class of maps for which many facts from basic analysis go through in almost unchanged form. <laughs> Uh, so this is uh, the, the, the place where we need that our manifolds are in fact Banach. So uh, we want to apply here an implicit function theorem, and the easiest setup where this actually does work is a setting of Banach spaces, Banach manifolds. Um, so another uh, theorem of uh, great importance is the one called the theorem of Sart and Smale. And the statement is that almost any, uh, well, in quotes, almost any value is a regular value for a third whole map. So let me uh, be a little bit more precise. So the set of regular values for a third whole map. is of the second category this means this is a, a, a countable intersection of open everywhere dense uh, sets in particular uh, this is dense Okay, so uh, I won't prove uh, this theorem, but in fact, this is 
uh, more or less an easy application of a finite dimensional SART theorem. Uh, now, one more notion that I uh, need is, I will say that F is proper if a preimage of a compact set is compact. So <coughs> now let us uh, do something interesting. Uh, so let me assume that we have a regular value. So y is a regular value. Uh, the index of f uh, is uh, 0. And so if, you have, uh, if f is uh, and f is proper, Right, the fact that y is a regular value means that the preimage uh, is uh, a manifold, index is zero, so this is a zero manifold, and f is proper means that uh, the preimage is compact, so we have a finite set of points. Right. So you can count the number of points in the preimage of y, and this is a well defined number, and if, if I take this uh, mod two, this is called the degree mod 2 of f. <coughs> now an obvious question here is, uh, does this depend on y? And of course, uh, because the notation already says, uh, this is independent. So more precisely, we have the following theorem. The mod 2 degree is well defined. And secondly, uh, if F0 is homotopic to F1, and so homotopic means here uh, inside the space of fred hall maps, so uh, the homo uh, homotopy should be through fred hall maps, then the degree mod 2 of F0 equals the degree mod 2 of F1. Again, the uh, proof here uh, doesn't actually differ from the finite dimensional case, uh, so I uh, gave a, a proof in my notes. If you are interested, you can uh, have a look. But essentially nothing, uh, sort of uh, the uh, infinite dimensions here do not show up. So uh, the proof goes through as uh, you, you know this from the finite dimension. But in any case, so this has a, an interesting corollary. Uh, if you know that the degree mod 2 of f is 1, then f is surjective. And so this gives you, for instance, a topological uh, condition uh, in which you can ensure that your equation is solvable. OK, so are there any questions to that? If not, uh, let me complicate things a little bit. So we always want to complicate. Today, uh, the whole lecture is about complications. Uh, so here is an alternative approach. So <coughs> I will assume that, so assume uh, we have Instead of just one map, we have a family of maps. So let me denote this by Kelly F from X times W. Uh, by the way, so uh, here is one more condition that uh, I should have stated. Uh, is it uh, as well defined provided Y is connected? All right, if Y is disconnected, we essentially, uh, we may have uh, we sort of have just different uh, maps. In any case, uh, so let us assume that we have the whole family of maps. Well, this is again uh, a Banach manifold. I will assume this is connected. Into Y and uh, I will assume that the following properties are uh, satisfied. 
So best property is that for any W in W, the map FW, so this is now from X to Y, just a restriction of uh, Kelly F to X uh, times W is Fred Holm of index zero. Uh, I will also assume that this is uh, proper. The second uh, hypothesis is that uh, there exists W zero in W such that F W zero is our original map F. So that is we have just a deformation of uh, a given map uh, F. And the third condition is that Y is a regular value for Kelly F. Right, this doesn't imply that Y is a regular value for straight F. Uh, it may not be the case. Uh, okay, in any case, what we have, uh, because Y is a regular value for F, uh, we can take the pre-image of Y. Now this is a submanifold in X times W. Here I have a natural projection onto W, so this gives me a map pi to W. <coughs> and uh, it's easy to show that, so here is, uh, if you wish, the fact, or a lemma, that pi is in fact Fred Holm and the index of pi equals the index uh, of FW. If you wish it, this is just the same as the index of straight F. Say it again. Uh, yes. I mean, uh, so this fact is more general. Uh, I, I do assume that this is zero. Uh, but even if you don't assume this, uh, this still holds. And so by uh, the Sartre's mail uh, theorem, we know that there exists uh, W, uh, if you wish, close, uh, so arbitrarily close to W zero such that uh, W is a regular value for pi, which means that uh, the pre-image of W, and this is just the same as FW, so the pre-image of Y with respect to FW is a submanifold of dimension D, so uh, this is, again, the index of F, and this works, again, in a greater generality, but uh, we can assume this is zero. And now, the proposition is that uh, for any W1 
W2 has a bow. The pre-image, so the, this is uh, a finite number of points, uh, so I can consider the number, so uh, the number of points in the pre-image, mod two, this is the pre-image, so the number of points in F uh, W2 minus one of Y, and they are equal. So uh, maybe the last uh, part of the theorem is a proposition. Uh, in fact, uh, this equals degree mod two of straight F. <coughs> now here are uh, two proofs uh, of the theorem. One is uh, a little uh, sort of complicated, not quite. Uh, one is very easy and one is sort of a little bit more complicated. But since we are doing, so the motto uh, or the uh, slogan of the today's lecture is uh, let's complicate things, so let us do the complicated proof. So here is a proof. Uh, I consider the space of uh, passes connecting W1 and W2, so let it be gamma in CK, say, 1, 2, to W, such that gamma 1 is W1, uh, and gamma 2 is W2. Now this is a non-empty Banach manifold, Right, so it's a and so I can uh, pick a point here, say gamma, and I can uh, construct a map f hat from uh, x times gamma times the interval into y. So uh, what I do is uh, say so f hat of x gamma t is just f of x gamma t. And now it's easy to check that uh, actually uh, y is a regular value for f hat, that is well, uh, maybe uh, let's do uh, that again. So we take uh, f hat minus one of y, this is now a sub-manifold in uh, x cross gamma Across the interval, we have here a natural projection onto space gamma, and this map is again uh, Fred Holm. So this means that for generic gamma in gamma, uh, we will have, so let it be again pi, pi minus one of gamma. This is simply uh, what? This is uh, the space of uh, those x t's uh, such that f of x gamma t equals zero is a submanifold. And this is now a parameterized version of the space that we uh, had so far. And in fact, this is a uh, manifold of dimension one. What we have pictorially is uh, a simple picture, so uh, we have something like this. So this is, uh, so uh, we have uh, a bunch of points, say, 
uh, like here, some bunch of points in here, and this uh, manifold that we m gamma is just a one manifold which connects uh, the boundary points. It may be something like this. Right, it's not just a, uh, an abstract manifold, so this is a manifold with boundary, and the boundary of m gamma is just, uh, you know, f inverse of y w1, if you wish, uh, cross 1, uh, and union with f w2 y cross 2. Okay, but now uh, you know from this picture that uh, any uh, smooth one manifold has at least two ends, uh, either has two ends or no ends at all, which means that if I count points here mod two, this will be the number of points mod two on, the, on this side of the boundary. Right, so this immediately uh, tells us, so this implies the statement. Okay, uh, so now uh, what is the, uh, well, let me give you an easy proof uh, of that. Uh, so here is proof two. Uh, since we know that FW1 is homotopic to FW2, uh, because we can connect W1 and W2 by a pass, uh, this is again homotopic to F, uh, then the degree of f w1, so mod 2, equals the degree uh, of f w2 mod 2, and this is the degree of f mod 2. And that's the whole proof. Right, so uh, of course you may ask uh, why uh, did I consider this proof rather than uh, the simpler one? The point is that uh, the construction of the proof here is more general, right? Uh, the, the, uh, what we have done here is uh, that we allowed y to be a fixed point, so we didn't need to vary y. And this will be valuable for the equivariant setups that I will consider uh, later today. Okay, <clears throat> are there any questions to that? Yes? Uh, okay, I see, I see, I see. You're right. Yes. Any other question? Okay. Now, uh, as you already know uh, very well from uh, smooth topology, uh, the degree can be defined as an integer, not, not just a uh, as a number mod two, uh, in, at least in the case when we have a map between oriented manifolds. And so we may ask, is it possible to define the degree also uh, as a number, uh, as a z-valued degree? And so this requires certain uh, tool, which is called the determinant <coughs> line bundle. Okay, so uh, the setting is this. Uh, assume we have a family of Fred Hall maps, or linear Fred Hall maps. So this is where P is just a parameter, uh, lives in some parameter space. So uh, as I've said, each dp is a linear Fred Hall, and P is just uh, 
in general, in general, just a topological space. Now, uh, if you have this, uh, at any point P, I can take the uh, determinant of uh, TP, which means the following. So, this is topological space. And uh, if P is fixed, I will take that TP to be, so there is no enough space, so let me uh, continue here. So this is the top exterior power of the kernel of TP. So we know this is finite dimensional, so we can take his top exterior power, tensored with the uh, top exterior power of the core kernel of TP. And let us dualize the second space. In any case, uh, what we have is, uh, at any uh, point P, we have a real line. And uh, the important fact is that uh, this family of lines is, in fact, uh, is there any question? Uh, where? Yeah. yeah. Zero is always, uh, yes, uh, why is zero? Um, okay, uh, what, uh, what I'm trying to say is that uh, we can take that TP, so uh, that T, now this is a family of, uh, of lines parameterized by points of P, and this is in fact a locally trivial real line bundle. The local triviality here is not uh, sort of quite obvious because what can happen is uh, if you vary P, uh, the dimension of kernel and the, of the core kernel may vary, uh, and it's not quite clear that you can choose a local trivialization, uh, but in fact, this is always the case. Uh, and the proof is, again, uh, not really hard. Uh, but uh, I don't want to, to talk about the proof of that, so I can uh, look it up uh, either in the literature or in the notes. Uh, but let us just take this as granted. And with this, let me assume uh, that uh, we have, again, a family as before, f x times w to y. Uh, and the properties are very similar. So uh, f w is Fred Holm for any w. Um, say index of f w is d. I will assume that y is again a regular value of f. Uh, what else? Uh, I will assume that f W, so the preimage of Y is compact. And the last assumption is that the determinant line of D uh, X F W is Trivial, uh, well, uh, let me say uh, trivial over x times 
W. So this is a little bit more than I really need, but let me say uh, uh, what, I, uh, what I'm saying is whenever you take a point x w in this space, I can take the derivative of this function uh, and I take the determinant, and this is a trivial line bundle. Uh, yes. And now, uh, actually, even by saying that uh, the bundle is trivial, I actually mean that the bundle is trivialized. So there is a preferred trivialization of this bundle. Now the theorem is, and you already know the proof, more or less, if A D holds, then for a dense subset of Ws, M W, so F W inverse image of Y as a compact oriented submanifold of dimension D. And again, uh, For any choices W1 and W2 uh, as above, MW1 and MW2 are oriented. So what I, uh, what I mean is that uh, this manifold is oriented, this manifold is oriented, and there is uh, a d plus one dimensional submanifold whose boundary is uh, MW1 plus MW2. Okay, uh, so here is a proof. Uh, actually, you could you the proof on your own. Uh, the only thing that we need to discuss is actually the orientation. So the determinant of dx f w, right, uh, by the definition that this lambda top of the kernel, you know, uh, tensor plus lambda top of the core kernel and dualized, but now, since we have assumed that y is a regular value, there is no co-kernel. This is 